Hey all, I'm Paul Rees, a developer advocate with Google, and welcome back to ML on Android with MediaPipe, a series introducing machine learning and its application on Android with the MediaPipe framework. In this video, you will learn how to apply the machine learning concepts that you learned about in the last video, which I will link in the video description in case you missed it, within your Android apps. We will focus on a few tasks that we already talked about, image classification, object detection, and hand gesture recognition. Each of these tasks work with still images or videos that are opened from your user's gallery or on frames pulled directly from their device camera. As each of these will follow a similar coding paradigm, let's start with image classification for still images. This will allow you to take an image and identify multiple items within that image, giving you both the name of what the ML model thinks it sees and how confident it is in that prediction. The first thing you'll need to do is import the MediaPipe task vision dependency into your app through the build.gradle file. After bringing in the dependency, you will need to create the image classifier object that will, as you might guess, classify images. This will involve creating a base options object that will let you set the delicate or hardware that will be used for classification, as well as the model that will be used for image classification. The model used will need to reside in your app's assets folder. Next, you will want to create a new image classifier options object. This will let you set the score threshold, which is the minimum amount of confidence the model needs to have before returning a result, the max number of results you want to get back from the model, and the running mode. In this example, the running mode is set to running mode.image because you will work with the still image. From there, you have a few different ways that you can create the image classifier. But for this video, you can use the create from options method to apply all of the options that you just created. In the next step, once you have imported an image from the gallery, which is a little outside of the scope for this video, you can convert it to a bitmap and then turn that bitmap into a new MP image object using the MediaPipe bitmap image builder utility. Then you can pass that to the image classifiers classify function, which will attempt to classify the image synchronously. Because this is a synchronous operation, you will want to make sure that, that it is happening off of your main UI thread. Once the classification is complete, you can do something with the result, which is the label and confidence score that I mentioned earlier, such as displaying the labels within your app. Now that you've seen how you would make this, let's take another look at what a finished app would look like. You can see that we're able to open the gallery, then wait a moment while inference happens followed by seeing the labels for what the model believes it has detected. For more detail, you can find all of the code for this sample up on the MediaPipe samples GitHub repo. Great, so let's take a look at how you can do object detection from a video file, which you can see in the GIF here on the screen. Creating the object detector is done in the same way as creating the image classifier, except now you will use the object detectors version of options with the running mode set to running mode.video. The next thing to do is retrieve the URI for a video in the user's gallery so that it can be analyzed. With the URI, you can retrieve the media and get the video's duration. You will need this duration later in the process because each detection will need a timestamp for the frame so the video can be processed in the correct order. Since Media Metadata Retriever returns frames that are smaller than the actual dimensions of the video file, you can also get the first frame to find that frame's width and height. While this isn't necessary for performing object detection, it is necessary for displaying results back on the screen at the proper scale. If you don't need to display the results on the user's device, then you can skip saving these dimensions. But if you are interested in how we handle displaying bounding boxes on the user's device, you can head over to the official object detection sample after watching to see how scaling and displaying is performed by looking at the overlayview.kt file. From here, you can figure out how many frames will be analyzed based on a time gap in between key frames. In this case, we're using 300 milliseconds in between frames. This example will also create a new list that will contain all of the results from the object detector. Next, you will want to loop through each key frame to perform object detection. You can start by finding the timestamp for each key frame. And once you have that value, you can use the retriever to extract that frame from the video as a bitmap. From there, you will ensure that the bitmap is formatted as ARGB8888. Then you can convert it to a media pipe image object. 
At this point, the last thing you will need to do is call the object detectors detect for video method with that MP image and the timestamp for the specific frame. Once you have the result for that frame, this example stores the result, which contains the classification, confidence, and the information about the bounding box in the results list, and then returns it to the app. You will also want to make sure that you release the media metadata retriever once you're done with it. Just like with the image classification sample, you can find this example on GitHub to try it out yourself. Here we can see the object detection app again highlighting detected objects and displaying where they are within each keyframe. The final computer vision task for this video is gesture recognition using the live camera feed, which you can see here. The gesture recognizer is a little different than the other two examples, as it supports a minimum hand detection confidence, a minimum hand presence confidence, and a minimum tracking confidence that needs to be met before a successful result can be returned as a part of its available options. Since you're using the camera live stream for this example, you'll also need to set the running mode to live stream. One important thing to note about this is that, unlike the previous two examples, live stream recognition happens asynchronously. This gives developers a huge advantage over video or image modes when using the camera as MediaPipe already has the logic built into it to drop frames if they start coming in faster than they can be processed, while also not needing any extra overhead like finding keyframes. To support this setup, you will need to add a results listener and an error listener to the options before creating your gesture recognizer object. Once you have your gesture recognizer created, you'll need to retrieve camera frames that can be analyzed. This is made fairly easy through the use of Camera X, though a complete explanation of Camera X is beyond the scope of this video. You can find more information about Camera X in the documentation linked in the video description below. The relevant part of Camera X for on-device machine learning is the image analyzer. This component will run after every camera frame and has a variety of options that will be useful for working with your models. This includes setting image rotation, setting the camera ratio so that it's closest to what the model expects, and setting the image format. Once the image analyzer has been called, you can kick off recognition using the image proxy object that is passed in from the camera. With the image proxy object available, you will need to convert it to an MP image for use with MediaPipe. There are a few different ways that you can do this depending on the output image format that was used, such as RGBA or YUV. So I'll refer to the documentation to provide you with the latest and most accurate information on how you can do this within your apps. Plus, you can review the official sample for gesture recognition to see our current recommended implementation. After you have the MP image object, you can pass it to the recognize async method on the recognizer, along with the timestamp for the current camera frame. Any result from this operation will be sent to the result or error listener that you added to the options earlier so that the new content can be displayed. For gesture recognition, these results include the label that the model thinks the gesture represents, how confident it is, and a series of landmark locations on the hand that can be used to draw out the gesture information. In the demo that we have on GitHub, you can see how we're displaying landmarks from the hand and connecting them in the UI as well as providing that classification for each hand gesture. You can recognize things like thumbs up, thumbs down, victory, or a closed fist using an off-the-shelf model that we use for our sample app. And you've made it through the computer vision section of this series. That was an overview of adding machine learning capabilities from MediaPipe for still images, videos, and a camera feed into your Android apps which gives you the ability to add a lot of really cool and useful features to your apps without a ton of development overhead. When you do build those great apps, please post them on Twitter and tag TensorFlow, share them to the TensorFlow forums, or leave a comment right here on YouTube, because we're honestly excited to see all the cool things people make. In the next video, you will step away from Android for a moment to learn how to create a new custom gesture recognition model without having to dive into the underlying data science. So I'll see you there.